Some people would say I'm an Anchor fan. They could be right. Just last week, I went to All Energy in Australia, and this happened actually right after I installed my home battery. Now, you guys might be wondering, why did I install an Anchor home battery? Well, I think there's some good reasons, and I'm curious to know if you guys actually agree with me. Is, was it a good decision for me to get an Anchor and not get something else because there's so many other options on the market? There's one very good reason why many of you should get an Anchor battery, or in fact, it's your only real choice, I think. And stick with me. Let me know if you agree. Just a small one, though. And I do have a, another Anchor battery here. This one. And I've got another Anchor battery here. This one just arrived. And I, well, have a couple of other Anchor batteries. This one here, which is carrying the house right now, and the sauna. Oh, we're about to jump in the sauna, so that's powering our sauna right now, six kilowatt sauna. And here's another battery from Anchor, and another one. So in total, we've got 50 kilowatt of batteries, plus about another five kilowatt there, nearly 55 kilowatt. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I have a 50 kilowatt hour anchor home battery. It's comprised of three stacks and there is a total of 10 five kilowatt modules in total in these three stacks. There's two inverters built into the system. So that means that I have two 10 kilowatt inverters and a total of 50 kilowatt hours of batteries. And so I can charge it 22 kilowatt AC on an electric car. So 20 kilowatt max. Now some EVs like the Zika 7X, which I'm about to pick up soon, it can do 22 kilowatt. So I can do 20 kilowatt just from the batteries alone. Now, here's the thing for me, I usually use solar to charge my EVs, but interestingly, now that I've got these batteries, I've found that I'm not so worried in the peak point, you know, when you're charging your EV and it's the, the afternoon, I generally will try and, you know, go and monitor it. So I'm not going, I'm not gonna be using electricity. And I'm just using solar, but now I'm not so worried because I've got 50 kilowatts of batteries. I can actually use a bit of those batteries to charge the EV. But the reason, the biggest reason why I use the Anchor Solix batteries is, well, there's two reasons. One is they fit in my garage. Uh, most of the battery systems are too big for many people's garages. So if you put them on the wall in your garage, all of a sudden you can barely drive into your garage. So you want a slim battery. Yeah, my, a lot of the batteries, they're double the, double the thickness, if not more, than that of the Anchor battery. And they look shithouse, a lot of them. And I think that, to me, looks, it shouldn't be the primary factor. Definitely not. But it should be a factor. I mean, I, I don't understand some people buying these batteries that look terrible. They look like these metal boxes. And, you know, if it's hidden, whatever. Who cares? But most people's batteries are not hidden. You're going to see it. You're going to walk past it probably every day. So that was another another reason, right? Slim, fits in my garage, and it looks great. Now, one other factor that people are not considering is sometimes your app doesn't integrate properly with your battery system. It does happen with everyone. I've been on all the forums. I've seen everything from SIG Energy and everyone else. And sometimes the apps don't integrate properly. There's like, I don't know what happens. Weird stuff goes on. I'm telling you this is correct. Like yours might be working properly every day. That's fine, great, but not everyone's does. And there's always things that happen with the apps. And so you don't know, right? If the app isn't working, functioning properly, and it's happened to me numerous times with different um, solutions, then you can walk up to the anchor batteries and when you approach it, it'll sense your presence and it shows your digital readout on the battery, showing you how much battery you have, how much solar you've accrued, and what power you're using at that moment in time. So you can then go, well, the app's telling me it's uh, it's doing this. Actually, this is what it's really doing. 
and then you can sometimes reset your app or reset something um, and reset your connection and get it to work. But the point is you can just walk past in your garage and glance over. It'll light up as you walk past with a blue fluorescent light and the digital screen will show you the readout. Like I said, it'll say, oh, you've got 94% battery left or you've got 10% battery left, whatever it may be. So I love that. And very few other batteries have that feature where you can actually see a digital readout of what's actually going on directly on your battery. And I think it's peace of mind, You're not just having an app and hoping that the app's right, um, which sometimes they're not. Uh, I can tell you sometimes they really aren't. So that's good. Now I'm not saying the Anchor battery app is a problem, but I know just from the forums and everything else that people have had issues from time to time, glitches happen. So that's another reason. Now, the other reason is it's IP68 rating. It's rated so if you lived in the beach like I do, I'm about 150 meters from the beach here, uh, then I'm not gonna have any problems in five or 10 years with the salt corrosion. The salt kills everything. My roof is rusting, my cars are rusting, everything's rusting. So that's a big factor. Some battery packs, you've got to check them because they don't have the right dust and water rating. And in fact, very few battery options on the market have the rating that this has. This is the highest rating you can get and most other batteries don't have that rating. So if you don't live close to the beach, it's probably not a big deal. If, you're, if you've got your battery pack outside exposed to the weather uh, and, you do live, or, or, and or you do live close to the beach, you've got to consider that. It's definitely a factor. Sure, it's not gonna be a factor for you if you sell your house in five years, but if you're still living in there in 10 years, then it's definitely gonna matter. And remember, what are the things that fail all the time? Electric skateboards fail all the time. I've got numerous of them broken. Batteries broken. Uh, electric scooters fail all the time. Battery problems. Um, electric bicycles, battery problems as well. All of those devices, whether or not you've had problems or not, people do have problems with them all the time. And the reason is water. Usually water, sometimes sand and salt, but usually it's water getting into the batteries. So that to me was a big consideration. Now I should actually tell you a bit more about um, these batteries. Well, this is the upgraded version. The Solix X1 has been upgraded, right? And it's really simple to install. It's ultra slim. It's 15 centimeters thick, so it fits really well into narrow spaces. And it's also built for local conditions. It withstands coastal humidity and heat with a C5M anti-corrosion rating and premium materials tested to 90 hours of CAS exposure, C-A-S-S exposure. This ensures durability from minus 20 degrees Celsius, which never happens in Australia, but it does in some places, to 55 degrees Celsius. So that's worth considering. What is your battery rated for? What temperatures is it rated for? Before you buy one, that's you've got to have a look at that. So the hybrid single phase model supports a parallel connection of two units, and that delivers up to 10 kilowatt of output and 60 kilowatt hours of storage capacity reaching the maximum 50 kilowatt hour rebate limit while meeting larger and more dynamic energy needs here in Australia. So here in Australia, the maximum rebate is for a 50 kilowatt hour battery. Therefore, for me, it made sense to get a 50 kilowatt hour battery. Since I've done this, right, I have no energy bills, nothing. I haven't used a single kilowatt hour of energy. By the way, parallel connection enables four MPPT channels, optimizing solar production from different roof orientations, for maximum output all day, all year. So I have uh, 56 solar panels for a total of 26 kilowatt of solar production. And yeah, I'm, I'm capable now of sending most of that solar power to the batteries when, well, when I'm not using that solar power. So the battery is set to debut globally in the first quarter of 2026. I think I'm one of the first to have it but I've also got the first charger installation. It's the first parallel installation plus the first charger installation in the world. I've been told by Anchor. Don't know if that means anything to you guys, but anyway. And we'll have the top module, top cap, battery, battery, battery inverter yep. fly in magically, AKA lifted by Ian. These are hybrid inverters each side. And yep. the middle one is just a straight stack of 20 yep. kilowatt hours of batteries. And you've got 15 kilowatt hours each side for a total of 50 kilowatt hours. Okay. You've got two 12 kilowatt three phase hybrids giving you 24 kilowatt hour potential. Yeah, they look good, don't they, these batteries? Very nice. Yeah, very, very, very slim. So, as, as you can see, 
in the garage. It doesn't take up, doesn't take up much space. Just the, the edge here. First of all, Anchor have a Power.Dot Pro, and this is an intelligent energy gateway that simplifies whole home backup power integration. So it's a new product from Anchor as well. I don't have the Power.Dot Pro, but this is an option. If you've got single phase, it's worth considering. I've got three phase power, so I don't actually need it. But anyway, for single phase, it features a built-in meter and optimized wiring design. And this saves up to 30% installation time while supporting parallel connections and flexible whole home backup options. It's seamlessly compatible with solar and generator systems. So you can connect a diesel generator into it if you want to. So if you want to go completely off grid, 100% as in build a new house somewhere or just disconnect yourself from the grid, you can do that. And you can put in your battery system. Then if you need to, as a backup, you can have a diesel generator, which there might be two days a year. You might need it potentially. Maybe it doesn't, there's no sun for two weeks. Something really weird happens. You can connect your diesel generator straight into this PowerDot Pro from Anchor. So that's a good option that I saw at All Energy. I don't have that. I don't think I need it because I'm still connected to the grid, but it's certainly an option for some people if they want to. Like I said, it plugs, the diesel generator can plug straight into the side of it. So the PowerDot Pro, this new product from Anchor, it delivers faster, smarter, and more reliable energy for every home. Uh, but it might not be what you need. Uh, some people might need this. Some people might not. Now, the headline innovation of the All Energy Exhibition for Anchor, though, was their synergy between the X1 Energy Storage System and the new Anchor Solix V1 Smart EV Charger, which I've been using now for, a, I think I've had it for about a month now. My time goes so fast. An Anchor EV Charger. This can charge at 22 kilowatt. Matter of fact, that Anchor Charger has just charged my EV here. The Deepool Multi-Truck. So it's a 22 kilowatt charger and it's connected through the Anchor Solix app. So it's all integrated into one. The battery storage system is integrated in the app, my energy use and everything else. Plus it's all integrated to the actual charger itself. So you can charge just on solar, you can charge on batteries, you can charge it however you want. And these two products, the batteries and the charger, they create a unified smart energy ecosystem that syncs solar battery and EV data for dynamic energy optimization. And this cuts household electricity expenses by up to 88%, say Anchor, and installation time by 25%. Now, I don't know about those numbers, guys, but I do know that um, the app integration works really well. In fact, it's really good. So I love this integration. I had a 22 kilowatt charger before, and to tell you the truth, Anchor have just given me this charger um, to use. They've installed it, and I didn't even ask for it, but they've, they've installed it. And it's great because I had a, and well, what is the most popular EV charger? Zappi. It's a 22 kilowatt Zappi charger. I haven't been using the Zappi charger. I've actually only used the Anchor one now because of its integration with the app, with the batteries. And I also, on the app, can set things like time of use. Uh, I can actually tell it what my electricity costs are, what time of day, what my plan is, and put it all on the app. And then the app can work out how I should use energy. It's actually really cool. Cool features. Anyway, so the V1 Smart Charger features something called IntelliGesture. It's the world's first gesture-based charging interface, allowing users to start, pause, or switch charging modes with a single swipe. I recently awarded the IFA 2025 Innovation Award in the Accessibility category. It showcases Anchor's user-centric design ethos, says Energy Storage News Industry making clean energy more interactive and accessible for all. Lots of marketing speak there. But all I can say is, guys, I have one of these. Works well. Integrates with the app. Charges at 22 kilowatt or 7 or whatever you want it to charge at. Uh, you can set your limits. And I've had no issues with it. And one of the things I've noticed, guys, I've had three different EV chargers. This is my third. And one of the things I've noticed is this never gets locked to my car. I've had uh, three different cars, a Tesla Model 3, uh, a Deepal EO7 multi-truck and the Xpeng G6 all using this charger and it doesn't get stuck. Both of my other chargers would get stuck with my cars for some reason um, occasionally and it'd be quite frustrating. I haven't had this issue at all with the Anchor. So the battery and the charger, the batteries and the charger, I think they look really good as well. The charger does look cool. I've got it mounted outside my house and it's got this little mount and it, it does look nice. It looks kind of new and modern and I, I think that's kind of cool because people can see it so that's my system that's what i have 
to sum up, I've got 56 solar panels. They are longy solar panels and they're all black. So they're all black. They're not the kind of bluish black solar panels that most people have. And I think they look better, look a lot nicer on my roof. So 56 longy, all black solar panels, 22 kilowatt anchor charger. Um, and I've got the Anchor Solix home storage system with 50 kilowatt hours of batteries. It's got two 10 kilowatt inverters. They're parallel, all these, these three stacks. And, I, you know, it's, um, it's given me a total of 20 kilowatt output, which is more than, I, more than enough, more than I need. So it's working really well for me and I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, guys, let me know if you, what you've got. What system do you have? Why did you go with it? And what are you considering in the future if you don't have one yet? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.